Darcy's Corner, February 26, 2024. I've had a lot happen in the last couple of days in my life. And one thing I have realized, begun to realize, of course this isn't new, is that when I feel safe, I can feel confident in myself. And then I can interact with people and I can project confidence. Now for me... Confidence comes, well, for everybody, but confidence comes from doing things you're good at or you excel at. And I was always good at singing. I was always really good at karaoke. Just because I always did it for forever when I was a kid. And then I kind of stopped doing it as an adult. But it's because life got in the way and I had other things I was working on. So I stopped doing it. But after the pandemic, um... During the pandemic, I transitioned, so I lost my wife. I lost most of my friends, and I lost the community that I had. Um, they're still nice people. They still, I still like them. They still like me, but it just did everything. I lost all that. So I started going to this one bar in particular because I noticed that other queer people were there, and that I was safe there. I felt safe there. But I didn't spend a lot of money there because I didn't have any. And it was a family establishment, so it wasn't there was alcohol there, but you weren't going people didn't go there to get drunk. People would go there to shoot pool or sing karaoke. And they had some other events from time to time people would go for. But I started going for the karaoke just because I wanted to get out of the house. And the more I went to the karaoke, the more confident in myself I became. And people would compliment me on my singing sometimes. I did that for a year. That's the only place I went. Because I, I'm i in a small town Alberta and I'm queer. And I have never been queer in small town Alberta before. And before I lived a very sheltered Mormon life. And so now I'm out in the world and I don't know where it's safe or not for me to go. But I know that there are places that are definitely unsafe and that I can get hurt. And I'm afraid that people are going to be afraid of me. And that, that was, that's true. <laughs> people are afraid of me sometimes. But anyway, so I started going to this bar and I went there for a year. But after a year of me, you know, feeling pathetic at the end of every night going home alone. And if it was a karaoke night, I would stay till the last song because I didn't want to go home and be alone. And sometimes I go to this bar and I would sit there, and like the only reason I went to the bar or the you know this place that was queer friendly is because it was better than sitting home alone. But lots of times I go there and sit alone, and I would look at the flashy neon colors and listen to people. And sometimes I'd chat with somebody, but a lot of times I would just sit there all by myself, do absolutely nothing, and go home and feel pathetic at the end of every night. But eventually, I followed one of the other patrons to one of the other bars, where they were, there was also karaoke, but they were the host. I thought, well, okay, I know this guy, um, at least I know him. Like, I, we, weren't, we weren't really friends at that point, but I knew who he was. And he knew who I was because he'd seen me sing enough times. And I thought, okay, I'll just sit in this spot here and we'll see how it goes. Because I didn't know if I was going to get run out of there or first time I used the bathroom where I was going to get screamed at or what. So I went there and I sang some songs because I put my name on the list. And it was a big party that night. There was lots of college kids there and there was lots of stuff going on. And most people that were singing could really sing. I'm like, oh, I better put it, bring my A game and bring out my good songs. So I did. I brought my A game. I did my good songs. But eventually I got to be there so often that now I'm a regular there. And so now people there know me. They expect me. People, when I first started going, I was all by myself. And there was a couple people there that seen that and said, oh, Darcy, you come sit with us. And they put their arms around me and they said, we will be your friends. And as long as you're sitting at our table, you are safe. So now I have two bars to go to. But at the one bar, there's hardly anybody there most of the time. And when there is somebody there, 
So oftentimes they're kids or they're like teenagers. And that's scary for me because I have to be careful when I'm talking to somebody who might be underage. Sometimes the people there, the teenagers, would hit on me. The one time I was out in the parking lot and I was smoking a joint and the one guy comes up and asks for one. So I gave him one, which I shouldn't have done because he was underage. But I didn't really know that at the time. But I was just being friendly and gave him one. I was like, oh, thanks. And then he was like flirting with me and like kidding on me. And I, I recognized that for what it was. But then he started talking about a home room. I'm like, oh, that's a no. <laughs> but I was still very flattered though. And like he was expressing his orientation to me, which was something he couldn't do at home because his parents were homophobes. So the fact that he was attracted to me at all meant he wasn't exactly straight because I present pretty masculine. But again, nothing's going to happen with me and this teenager because he's a teenager. His parents are homophobes and I, even if his parents weren't homophobes, nothing was going to happen between me and the teenager. Okay, I, I don't want or need that headache in my life. But it was still very flattering that he was hitting on me. Anyway, but nothing's ever going to happen at that particular bar for a family place for me. But it did get me confident and it did get me singing and it got me in front of people. So then I started going to the other bar and the nice thing about the first one is they start their karaoke at seven and the other bar starts its karaoke at nine. So now I can just sing more songs and I can go back and forth between the two if when I, when I want to. And I have a social group at both of them. But eventually, like now I'm at the point where I'm confident in myself. I can go anywhere in this town confidently and not really worry too much. And I don't just have to go on karaoke night. I can go any night I want and I will probably be okay. I say probably. There's still homophobes here. I still have to watch where I sit and watch who thinks I'm trying to follow them or not. Like I find my friend groups and I stick around them so that I have people who are at least witnesses if something goes wrong. And so uh, the other night I'm at my original karaoke spot that I would go to, the one that starts at seven, and I'm sitting there with friends, legitimate friends. Some of them I know, some of them I don't know. It was somebody's birthday party. And so I, I knew half the people there. And the other half, I was getting to know. And then, huh, I got called out for bar hopping and stealing people's customers. And I'm like, excuse you? Nobody's paying me to be here. I don't work for you and you don't own me. Anytime I want to go to any bar, I can. And I go places where I feel welcome. And suddenly, I don't feel welcome here no more. So I left. But, like, the fact that that person just screamed at me in front of everybody and embarrassed me and made me feel like a piece of shit because sometimes I go to a different bar. And sometimes when I go to that different bar, some of the people will follow me. I'm not bringing them. I'm not telling them to go here or there. They can do whatever they want to do. I go to the other bar because there's different people there. And there's a different crowd that I'm singing to. And sometimes when I go to that other bar, people hit on me. There's a chance I could meet a potential partner there. And even if I don't meet a partner there, I'm introducing myself to new people, which opens up the possibility of eventually me finding a partner. Which has been my goal the entire time that I've been going to any of these places was to find a partner, but also to find my social group. And I noticed that when I'm at these other bars and I'm singing and whatever, people come, people will now come to my table. I now have a table where it's like, no, no, you can come sit with Darcy. You can come sit at Darcy's table and Darcy will protect you. I've done that for people. 
I've been there and I was hanging out with the group and I look across the bar and I see a guy that I knew who I hang out with occasionally. He was sitting all by himself. I don't know, so I went to go say hi to him. But I thought he was waiting for somebody or he was sitting with somebody else. No, he's all by himself. Like, oh, are you all alone? Well, come on over here, man. Come sit with me. Because I'm with these guys. Now, he wasn't with those guys. And they didn't they didn't care. <laughs> they didn't become friends, but they didn't care. It was fine. He could come sit, and he did. And it was great. Because now I get to spread the goodwill. I get to have the self-confidence. What's changed? My voice is still masculine. I still present the way I present. I still wear a dress and makeup and try to make myself as feminine looking and as attractive as I can, given what I have to work with. And my confidence has soared because of my singing. Because of my singing in front of different groups of people and all these groups of people more or less, accept me. So the idea that I am poaching customers from one bar or another is ridiculous. I simply go where the people are. And if some people happen to follow me, or if some people happen to stay because I stay, that's a huge ego boost to me because I'm not used to being the party. I'm not used to being the one that people want to go to, to hang out with. Because I was always the nerd in high school. I was always the one everybody hated. So I am used to not being popular. <laughs> and people not wanting to be around me. Because, I don't know, I smell bad. Or I'm awkward. Or I say stupid things. And, you know, these are all things I've had to overcome. Uh, hygiene's always an issue for me. Not that I don't bathe, but um, it gets bad after a couple of days, and I can't smell it. And so, if I'm not real active in my day-to-day -day life, if I'm not lifting heavy things and building shit, then I don't feel gross. I don't feel dirty, so I don't always think to take a shower. Or sometimes I'm working um, ridiculous hours... And so I have a choice. I can sleep, I can eat, or I can shower. But I gotta pick one. <laughs> and showering is the one that I cannot do and still function. It's just it's unpleasant for people around me. But I try to maintain hygiene so that I don't smell bad. And I try to not be overbearing with people so they're not afraid of me. And sometimes... I can be interested in a person too much and then I end up like stalking them, but I don't mean to do that. So I'm very conscious of that. And I'm like, don't smother people. Don't stalk them. Don't scare them. But be friendly. Be engaging. Be nice. Tell jokes. Listen to their stories and their problems because like, I think I got problems, and I do, but then I'll talk to some other guy, and I'm like, wow, you were, you went to Padoka, huh? That's the local loony bin, okay? You don't judge people who have problems, because you know what problems are. Anyway, so I've made all these friends and these connections, and I'm, I'm a popular person now. Darcy brings the party with her. But it doesn't always work that way. But sometimes it does. And I like that. But nobody owns me. There's not one establishment that owns me. And because I go home alone every night, there's no human being that can say, I have a claim on Darcy. She's my person. I would love for somebody to claim me. I would love for somebody to say, Darcy is my person, and, you know, I'm going to go be with Darcy, and I have her back, and she has mine. I would love to have that, but I don't. I watch other people have that, and I kid them, and I say, get a room. <laughs> you guys make me sick. 
But I say that with love because I love these people. And I'm glad that they have happiness. And I'm just sorry that I don't. But I'm, I'm okay with them having it. Anyway. This is a long one. But. Basically I got kicked out of the one establishment. Because if I go there and then I stay for a little bit. And then I leave and people follow me. Well then I'm stealing people. And how dare I do that to them. If those people stay, it's because they're having a good time and they want to stay. If I'm leaving, it's because I've had a good enough time there now, and now I'm going to go somewhere else and have more of a good time. But I'll be back next day, next week, unless I don't feel safe. If I don't feel safe, if I don't feel welcome, then I'm not coming back. Darcy's Corner. Peace.